Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do something outdoors. It's cold, it's windy, um, but we're going to do something fun. I can't stay cooped up anymore. What we're going to be doing today is shed hunting. Now, what is shed hunting? Are we looking for a garage? No. What we're doing is we're looking for antlers that have fallen off of a deer. Uh, typically, this is called a shed. Shed antlers uh, is what they call it. Um, and these these fall off about this time of year. This is the last week of January. Uh, I like to wait till about the first of February, but I'm gonna get an early start. Hopefully, um, beat anybody to some that have already fallen off. Uh, typically, what I've learned is the bigger ones fall off first, and that's the biggest prize. The bigger they are, the bigger the prize. Um, but the goal is not to just find those. The goal is to be outdoors. Uh, get a little exercise and maybe see something else maybe see a, a big live deer with still got his antlers or a bald eagle there's a bald eagle that stays here uh, during the winter time where i'm at i'm at stephen a forbes state park i'll flip you around and we'll go ahead and get started because it's cold and i need to get moving so as i stated we are on public ground um, and this is free for anyone to come out here and enjoy basically what i'm doing today is just going for a walk in nature and and it'd be great if i found an antler that'd be the icing on the cake but there's a good chance that's not going to happen so what i thought i'd do is i thought i'd share some of my tips with you i don't deer hunt anymore but i do still like to find their antlers um, so what i like to do is is put myself in a place where the deer spends the most time this time of year. So just doing the math, uh, that's gonna be somewhere where he's either sleeping or eating or traveling in between. So um, I like to find patches of, of weeds like that over there. That's where he's gonna sleep or a field like this where he's gonna pick up the scraps of the combine mist. And then right here would be a good spot. See, this is where he's traveled in between. And then I'll just walk this out, take a good look. I don't have time to walk all that. Plus, it's it's windy and cold today. So I just like to make a good look right here. I don't see nothing. And I'll come back over here where the walking's easy. I'll look at the other side. And uh, the biggest tip that I found is uh, a fence. So let me just back up and show you. This is old right here. But this tells me right here, this tells me that there's been a buck come through here. So what he's done is he's, he's found him a tree here and he's rubbed his antlers up on this and then he scraped the ground with his foot right there and and then he'll, he'll urinate in that and that's telling the does when they're ready to uh to be bred that would have been back in november that come find me he's saying i'm i'm here i got big antlers and uh you'll like me so this is a pretty good place right here i'm just gonna hang around here and look, because this seems like a really good place for him to be bedding down. Spending some time bedding down. Plus, it's not very windy right here. But back to what I was saying is a fence. Um, so that's going to be some more sign that there's deer here. A fence, what happens when they come to a fence is they jump over it. All right when them when the antlers are ready to fall off i think it's kind of like when you're losing your baby teeth they start to wiggle and get loose well i think when they jump a fence when they land that jarring kind of helps them antlers to fall off i'm on a good trail here i'm just going to keep walking it so those are my tips fences bedding areas and feeding areas and then any travel corridor in between like, like I'm following now those are my tips we'll keep walking we'll take some still shots 
and uh, we'll, we'll get back with you if we find something. Okay, so here's another sign that tells us there's there's bucks in the in this area in this field where we're looking. And what this is is he'll come up here and he'll scrape his antlers on there. He's got a scent gland up between his antlers on top of his head, and that'll also tell other deer that he's here. Uh, but if you walk up and you see something like that, you're in a good spot for for bucks. Okay, so here's another. You can see there's a woods to the east of me and then you can kind of tell that well right here's a big bush but you can kind of tell that this is mostly a field right well that's where they'll hang out and look for stuff to eat but what the big bucks like to do is they like to stay close to the edge of the woods where they're well hidden um, so i just kind of walked a big circle around this this field and there was a couple major trails cutting across it and i followed those uh, but I'm going to head on to the next field and, and keep looking. All right, I'm walking the edge of this field, and uh, this is well blocked from the sun or from the wind, and the sun is hitting me, and it feels a lot better. Temperature today, this morning, is 30 degrees. I think the temperature is just going to drop all day. The high was 34. I was expecting it to be warmer today and nicer, but uh, it's pretty tough out here. With the wind, I'd say the wind chill's probably at least down to 20. It's nice and quiet here. I'm just gonna keep walking this field and checking things out. Okay, what I've come into here is a hiking trail. So it's nice and open here. And this probably isn't a great spot to find uh, deer antlers because there'd be more human traffic here and the big deer try to avoid humans. Um, but you just never know where you're going to find them. Uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, literally. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. They can fall off anywhere. Okay, here's something neat we'll show you this pond here if you look follow this trail you see the cut there in the in the cattails go on across right over there see if i can zoom you in that's a beaver dam piled up over there a beaver hut it's not really a dam because this is a pond uh, but they've piled a bunch of junk up there let's see i lost you there we go. They piled a bunch of junk up there to make themselves a hut. Okay, so I'm just walking the edge of this field and I stumbled up on something that has me baffled, but it's a little bit sad actually. I'm gonna show you what we got. Uh, what this is is a mink. Uh, and he has frozen. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I'm sure he lives at that pond over there. Um, I'm not sure. I don't see any marks on him, really. I don't know what would have killed him. He may have just froze. Got too far from a good hiding spot. and It's a small one. He's not a big one. But uh, that's a really nice hide right there. I don't have a trapping license. You can, you can't, you can't shoot these. You can't hunt them. You can only trap them. If I had a trapping license, I'd, I'd take him home, make sure somebody got that hide. But yeah, that's a shame. We'll keep looking for sheds. See, so you just never know what you're gonna find down the woods. Okay, here's Okay, what I want to show you here is these tracks uh, that go out all over this pond. Um, but I think what, what, I know what these tracks are. These tracks are from a coyote. And uh, on the other side of that tree line over there is the field. And then on the other side of the field is where we saw that mink. 
Um, so that coyote may have been over here hunting, hunting that mink. Uh, I'm confident that that mink's not going to go to waste because that coyote's going to find him uh, and have him a pretty good meal. And then I believe, so these are the coyote tracks, and I believe, you see these smaller ones uh, right there? Um, is that right? No. Here? I don't know if you can see them. The camera's not picking them up. All right, go up, up, right there. Okay, those tracks, I believe to be a raccoon. And uh, you can kind of see it a little better right there. He goes on across. It's just fun to get out here and, and see things like that. You see where the coyote, he's walked along the edge. All the way up around the pond, looking for a place where it's not frozen, probably where he could find a meal. Okay, I want to show you this. This is another rub. Uh, this is a pretty serious rub. See, that tree's a little bigger. And he really did some work on it. And this, this field just looks really, really good. Uh, so I'm going to look this one over pretty well. Okay, this right here where I'm standing is a really, really good bedding area. It's got woods on both sides. And it's got a travel path down the center. And then there was a cornfield right here. Uh, so if I had been hunting in the fall, boy, I think I'd have had a stand right here somewhere nearby. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk each of these paths just to make sure I don't miss one where, where a deer's been laying here and his antlers fell off. Because uh, this is just a really good spot. I'm going to spend a little more time here too. Okay guys, that's it for today. Unfortunately, we didn't find a shed, but it's not a total loss. Uh, we had a great day. We got uh, three and a quarter miles of walking in, took about two hours, had a good time, seen a lot of stuff. Hopefully I've, hopefully I've encouraged at least one of you to get out here and enjoy nature. Um, what I will say is that one I showed you that I got the picture of, that came from right here two years ago. So they're here, you just gotta get out and find them. It's, it's about luck and timing and putting yourself in the right spot. You can do it, give it a shot. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one, bye.